Singapore government partners with Siji to set up a quarantine center for immigration workers. Experts say that reading to children since birth can stimulate their learning and cognitive growth. I can today headlines and make it so thank you for joining us. In Singapore, the novel coronavirus continues to spread throughout the immigration can work community. Thus, the government and the immigration worker dormitory partners to set up an emergency isolation center to prevent the continuing spread of the virus. The government and immigrant worker dormitory industry has solicited Siji's help to decorate and stock a safe and comfortable isolation center for immigrant workers in the country. As it is one week before the center is open, Siji volunteers use limited people and time to complete 3,600 care and blessing packages. On social media, I've seen many of the workers' dormitory and seen how anxious they look. I'm worried about them. So if I was an immigrant worker, I'll be real sad and hope that someone cares enough about me. My heart goes out to them. Their family back at home must be worried about them, so we must give them our best wishes and help them get through this difficult time. Some volunteers also head to the center to decorate the place and put detailed touches to show they care. The immigrant workers have done a lot for us in our surrounding. It is them who have worked tirelessly to build. This is our show of appreciation for their years of hard work for Singapore. After the center is operational, some volunteers will be on site each day to care for the medical staff, while others will be at home standing by their telephone so they can be a listening ear for those who stay there. The immigrant workers each day will also receive Jing's aphorisms in their familiar language to support them emotionally. 90% of these immigrant workers are from Bangladesh. So we invited some Bangladesh people and Indians to translate. So they can really be influenced by the positive language in their own understanding. Keep strong. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We love you. All the best. Stay strong. In the United States, the number of confirmed cases remains high. In Bronx, New York, many hospitals have admitted many patients confirmed with COVID-19. Due to insufficient protective materials, frontline medical staff have been put under great pressure. The New York chapter has been offering protective materials to major hospitals. The medical staff of the Bronx Nursing Hospital admitted that Siji's donation has become their most powerful support. Within New York City, the Bronx has been one of the communities hardest hit by COVID-19. At Bronx Care Hospital, medical staff has had to work around the clock and adapt in real time to fight the pandemic. As family medicine residents, you know, we're, we're more prone to be in the outpatient setting. Hey, I want to check your oxygen saturation, okay, man? But here, we're intubating patients. So I think the last time he saw his daughter was when he came in, when she called the ambulance, he had a high fever, and he was very, very lethargic, and he was not saturating well. I'll be back later. Up until COVID-19, I didn't ever have a patient die on me, and since COVID-19, I've had dozens, and I'm just one resident. Uh, family medicine floor so the patients on this floor are managed by uh, family medicine have a conversation there are 38 beds on this floor and of the 38 beds 100% are actually COVID patients or uh, patients under investigation meaning we're concerned that they do have COVID some of them are being discharged fortunately um, which is a, a wonderful thing now throughout the hospital we have over 300 patients um, that are COVID positive. Having to answer the phone, speak to the family, give them updates, and they can't be here 
to see their family member, and sometimes they're never going to see their family member again, and that's very, very difficult to deal with. Uh, today we're going to deliver six uh, large boxes uh, to the Bronze Care Medical Hospital, Medical Center, including level one uh, mask, like uh, 2,200 medical masks, and also 150 facials. And uh, this is the third time we're going to this uh, hospital because uh, uh, you have to race against the virus. If you are hesitate or slow, then uh, they will cost the human life. We really do appreciate this isn't the first donation they've um, provided us, and they promised that this isn't the last. I think we're doing far better thanks to people like you. Uh, we have a lot of gowns. We're able to at least have a new gown maybe two, three times a day. Bronx Care, as with many hospitals in New York City, had to drastically expand their ICUs to manage the massive influx of COVID patients. PACU, I don't want to have to know that we have always... We made critical care in the PACU, critical care on 11th floor extension, critical care on the 17th floor, critical care... Where else? We probably were three other units. Probably three other units, yeah. So you will find a patient on a drip, on many drips, on a unit that we're normally not used to managing patients with drips. So we had to provide, like, bring the service to the patients then. You know, you bring the service to the patient instead of the patient coming to the critical care unit. The emergency room today is significantly quieter than it was two, three, four weeks ago, where um, they were seeing hundreds of patients per day in here. Do you feel like the curve is flattening? Oh, yes. Tremendously. From two weeks ago to now, it has really died down a lot. I just want to give you this shield. So these folks have uh, donated the shield, many shields. I think they were just delivered. We, we, all, we describe this as a family. We're all a big family. And we always talk that way, but now it really, really feels that way. I'm doing OK today. It's a day-by-day -day basis for me. I think last week I was experiencing a little bit of anxiety. And yes. we were taught to look for signs for each other. So if we notice that there's someone is not like peppy like themselves, we go around and says, you know, and let that person says, yes, I need help, or we emotionally support them as well. And you, you know, you just knew each other by their eyes. Because <laughs> remember, we all mask up and you have different gears, but somehow you got to know each other because all we could see really was just your eye. And you, when you look in somebody's eye, you could see how determined they were just to provide the good care. Patients with rare disorder have to go to hospitals often and therefore they need to use a lot of masks. Two mothers with children suffering from rare disorders utilize their student skills to make fabric mask covers for patients. Despite the epidemic, people are doing what they can to spread love. The boy is looking around with curiosity. 15-year-old Zheng An has two rare disorders, and therefore his mother has to stay close to him to care for him. His perceptions are that of a one-year-old. He might be hungry or needs to go to the restroom, but he cannot take care of himself. So I need to stay by his side to observe him. The parents of children with rare disorders usually work at home, doing some manual labor. During the epidemic time, they utilize sewing skills to make fabric mask covers for patients. Wang Yu, who has a chandoplasia, is also helping out. Our children go to the hospital very often, and their immunities are weak. They can use mask covers. I thought about helping other patients. The little girl works agilely teaching these big sisters ways to package mask covers. 
These beautiful young women are entrepreneurs who have raised 6,700 U.S. dollars to be donated to families coping with rare disorders. Our work has been affected by the epidemic. During this critical time, we thought about what we can do. Then we decided to organize a large event. There's a saying that the progress of the society can be seen from how we treat people who are physically and mentally challenged. Everyone has been affected by the epidemic, but we still help each other. Despite the epidemic, people continue to spread love and care. During epidemic prevention, the postmen are responsible for distributing masks to various pharmacies to ensure sufficient supplies every day. Take Zhanghua Post Office as an example, more than 2 million pieces of masks were handled daily. So the Foundation gave the postmen a special gift in appreciation of their contributions during this period of time. The postmen in green uniform arrived in motorcycles and are warmly welcomed by Chichi volunteers and team members. Starting from the 5th of February, the postmen have taken over the job of receiving and delivering masks. Taking the post office in Zhanghua as an example, more than 2 million masks were handled here in one day. They start handling the masks early in the morning. They need to grab every minute to deliver the masks to the pharmacies on time. Of course, this is our duty. If we are required by the country, we must try our best to complete the mission. Chiji Foundation does not forget this group of heroes standing at the back supporting the epidemic prevention. During epidemic prevention, these green angels who silently assist in delivering anti-epidemic supplies are easily neglected. In fact, they are the real heroes behind the scenes. These gifts of thanks are filled with volunteers' blessings and gratitude. The postmen are packing and sorting masks over there day and night. We all know about their hard work. Lin Yuchen, who has just started working as a postman since February, said it's honorable to devote himself for the country. It was difficult at that time, but I think it's for the health of all people in the country is very meaningful and valuable. Of course, we are happy that the epidemic is alleviated as a postman. We have put in our efforts for society. Because of the postman, people could buy masks every day. As the epidemic is gradually alleviated, the efforts of the postman during this period will not be forgotten. The government is encouraging parents to read to their children beginning at birth. Some say that they see little effect from this act because children are too young. However, experts say that reading of sound aloud and the colorful of picture can stimulate babies' abilities to learn language, train cognitive skills, and logic. Here in our report, we teach you how to read properly and choose the right picture book to bring families closer together. What Sitting and hugging each other tightly, this is a sweet moment for parents and children. When I was reading with her, I thought it was a process full of happiness and intimacy, and then she also enjoyed the process very much, because we could be together on the bed, on the chair, or everywhere. Yes, there is a lot of interaction. Reading together is the best way to develop a good parent-child relationship. From a scientific point of view, experts say that it is best to start from birth. As soon as you turn a page, another page pass up. Can you see this? The design of this book actually encourages children to turn the page. It turns out there is this kind of book specially designed for babies from zero to one year old. The hard shell book pages will automatically pop up, allowing babies to practice turning pages along with safe inks and thick pages. It's even convenient for children to chew on these books. Lu Yifang said that in addition to reading these books to children, there's another benefit. For example, when we meet a baby, we all want to talk, but we do it in a much slower, 
accelerated way. It's important to talk in this accelerated way. To be honest, many parents have their own style and special activities. The living room of Chen Guanjie's house has been turned into a reading room for children. At first glance, some think it is a library. This full-time housewife's favorite activity is interacting with her child every day. In order to let young children understand abstract concepts such as novel coronavirus, Chen Guanjie gets really creative and picks up some clay and mixes it together and then tries to match it with the colors in this picture book. At first, I thought that she was not interesting as she didn't understand what the virus was. So at the beginning, I thought about doing some handicrafts to demonstrate. And then she started to develop an interest. Her daughter, Xiao Bei, is three years old this year and has already been reading these picture books for three years. This is all due to the effort of housewife Chen Guanjie. They are playing like they are in school and doing fun things, as one example is this cardboard house built in the living room. It is all based upon this book. See, when we stand up, the roof is inclined like this, and there is even a chimney, and if you look there, it's even a bird's nest. Because her daughter really loves the house in this picture book, her parents spent a month to recreate this toy house. It's exactly the same as the book, as this can enhance a child's rich imagination. In fact, as long as you are willing to spend some time with your children and use your heart, every parent can read together with their child. This can inspire a child's imagination and language ability from a place as simple as a picture book. In China, the Shaoxing House in Shiku Village is a 270-year-old historical building. Inside of it, share a restaurant which suffered from rotting floors, which was in danger of collapse. To have 40 city volunteers, including four over the age of 70, did the hard work of carrying rocks and shoveling cement to complete this work. Inside this vegetarian restaurant, when the old wooden floor was ripped up, it was found to be wet and musty. In our village, from the first day the restaurant opened to now, there have been a thousand customers. They all come to our restaurant to dine, and impact upon our entire Xiquan village is very great. In order to provide villagers with a better dining environment, volunteers mobilized and laid down a base that could replace the flooring, which could decay and collapse at any time. Under the scorching sun, this relay team shoveled the cement. It was unbelievable to watch as this hard physical work was even done by four volunteers who are well on in their years. We are so old that we are happy to have this opportunity to help. We are filled with joy. For someone in their 70s, we just typically rest at home. We're very blessed. <laughs> Today, everyone was in harmony with each other to make this venue open to everyone. It's to lead more border servers to become vegetarian and protect the earth. Stepping inside and working together after six hours of continuous sweating, the work is finally done and the flooring will not collapse. This means that the vegetarian restaurant can continue to operate in the village and convey to everyone the wonderful taste of vegetarian food. Next, let's meet a devoted senior recycling volunteer in New Taipei City. In her later years, city volunteer Huang Xu Qiuying had to learn how to walk once more. Each step taken outside her home is very tiring, but she's willing to put in the effort. Fifteen years ago, she got into a major accident. 
Though she lived through it, her physical health was never the same again. Yet she remains determined as she makes two bus transfers to reach Tsuji Central Recycling Education Station. A few years ago, I couldn't walk well, but now my steps are more fun. I can even pick up recyclables on my way. She concentrates on sorting newspaper recyclables, but due to the condition of her right hand, she was unable to use the scissors in the beginning. If I couldn't cut it, then I would never be able to work independently. Now I can cut it myself and use my own strength to tie it all together. Your care for me has made me determined to do better. I can be strong and do things on my own. Many people who have gotten into accident like her would just sit in a wheelchair and have someone push them. Then they don't have to work as hard. Taking these slow walks takes determination, and her vow to give is very strong. I think that's how she is able to return to her state today. We have so much respect for her. I come here each day. I haven't missed a day. I'm very happy. I often say this. I am happy to be here. The way she doesn't bow down to life has also moved the neighbors to save the recyclables for her. Refusing to give up just because she was met with a terrible accident, she continues to do recycling well into her 70s. Malaka Tsuji volunteers cooperate with the UNHCR to provide refugees timely subsidies and also give them second-hand clothes. After learning that some refugees are in need of medical care, Tsuji volunteers invite Tima doctors to do the house calls to help them. During the pandemic, the refugees had no job available to support their family. Malaka Tsuji cooperates with the UNHCR to provide subsidies to them. Currently, I don't have work. If I have income, we can eat more. But now we have little to eat. Tsuji volunteers also invite Tima doctors to do house calls to check their health. When we came, we discovered that the kid has some skin problems on the face. So we invite Tima doctors to come with us to relieve their sufferings. It's very pitiful because they came from so far away and suffers financial problems. They don't have money to buy food, so as long as we can help, we should. Tsuji cares for these disadvantaged groups. So this group of refugees can get through the difficulties. A charity foundation in Indonesia designed a scooter with water and disinfectant liquid on it for people to keep their heads clean. Let's take a look at the next